getting the engine started was a huge success, but we can't celebrate quite yet. We still have a huge list of things to do before we can get the car inspected. Now that we have the engine creating heat, we have to work on removing the heat. So that means we are moving on to the cooling system. I started by filling the reservoir with water and wouldn't you guess it, it started dripping out everywhere. The first place that it started dripping out was the water pump. And I kind of anticipated this, so I already ordered a replacement. But as I continued to fill it up, the second place it started leaking out of was the flange in the front of the engine. These guys are notorious for cracking and mine is not the exception. Just a little half inch crack, just water seeps out of it a little bit at a time. So that's two things we need to replace. After that, I continue to fill and once that water hits the radiator hoses, all bets were off. As fast as I could pour the water into the reservoir, it poured out of the bottom of the radiator and like not dripped, but poured. So that basically means we're replacing the entire cooling system on this car. I've already removed the radiator from the car so that I could get the part number off of it and get that ordered. So we are going to jump in at that point, remove the rest of the accessories to get down to the water pump. And I have a new timing belt, so we're going to throw a new timing belt on as well. As soon as I pulled the radiator off, I saw that a bunch of the cross members on the car were basically rusted to pieces. Um, there is no way to save them. Luckily, I have a parts car, so I was able to pull the cross members off of that. But somebody had gotten to them before me and modified them in not a good way. Uh, so I had to spend an afternoon patching that up. So with the new cross members ready to go and all the parts in, let's start putting this thing back together. With the entire system buttoned up, it was time to start the first stress test. After a few minutes of letting the car idle, all of the air bubbles were burped out. I topped off the reservoir and then rolled the car out onto the driveway to let it warm up. The goal of this test was to get the radiator fan to turn on and off twice, which is a good indicator that the entire cooling system is working correctly. After a few minutes of idling, the temperatures started climbing and climbing and climbing and then didn't climb anymore. 
So I waited a few more minutes and the radiator fan never turned on. So something was wrong. I had previously checked the thermostat, the temperature switch, and all of the electrical system to make sure that the fan would actually turn on and all those systems were good, so something else was the issue. And the only thing that it could be was that the entire system wasn't becoming pressurized. So with a little hesitation, I pulled out the dipstick and wouldn't you know it, my engine is full of creamy hot chocolate, which means water is getting into the oil, which means I have a blown head gasket. And we all know that means I get to rebuild the engine. <laughs> So I'm going to go cry in this corner for a few hours and then get to ordering parts and we will get to rebuilding the engine in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I love hearing from you all in the comment section. Comments and critiques are welcome. Just remember to be nice. And last but not least, if you aren't a subscriber yet, please subscribe so that we can get up to 10,000 subs by the end of 2022. That's it. I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye.